and the times just keep getting happier. Man, if you're from Atlanta or if you're anywhere involved in the NFL, you know that the Atlanta Falcons have just beat the Miami Dolphins. And man, oh man, after the Braves just clinched the World Series yesterday, and of course the Atlanta Falcons winning this game, it's starting to feel really, really, really good for Atlanta sports. And specifically in this video, I want to go through my Atlanta Falcons and how they did win this game, things that looked really, really good and things that need improving. However, before I get into this video, make sure to like and subscribe turn on that notification bell help me out a little bit and without further ado let's get right into the video now of course after starting off the season Oh, and two to the point where it looked like the Atlanta Falcons were absolutely helpless. They are now three and three on the season. The Atlanta Falcons beat the Miami Dolphins 30 to 28 off a last second field goal. And to be honest, it should not have gone to that point. Of course, the Atlanta Falcons did almost pull a little bit of a choke job. However, they were able to come back down the field off a Kyle Pitts catch that was absolutely insane. You can go look that up. I mean, the highlights are insane. Kyle Pitts had a great game. Going to get more into that later. How However, however, the Atlanta Falcons nonetheless did win the game. They were up by two touchdowns with eight minutes left. So we need to improve on that. However, a win is a win when you're concerning the Atlanta Falcons. Now, of course, Kyle Pitts got involved again, just like he did in London. He did it better, better today in Miami. Kyle Pitts, seven receptions, 163 yards. Really could have easily been 200 plus yards and a touchdown. However, we're not going to get into any hypothetical situations. Kyle Pitts absolutely dominated this game. He looked absolutely incredible. Atlanta lined him up on the outside a lot more. It's clear that Kyle Pitts is an absolute dominant force on the outside of any offense, man. Kyle Pitts, right now, he looks like one of the better tight ends in the league already. He's just a rookie. Tons of excitement around. You can see on my face, you can see in the background, there's tons of excitement for this rookie. Now, of course, going down to Matt Ryan, he continues his streak of great games. This game against Miami, he went 25 for 40, 336 yards and two touchdowns. Did throw one interception and did uh, have a pretty bad turnover at the end of the game that almost cost us the game. That one interception wasn't really too much of his fault it was a little bit of an underthrow. However, in the last four games, Matt Ryan has a combined 10 touchdowns and one interception. Man, oh man, is Matt Ryan looking good. The guy is looking like Matty Ice right now. Matty Ice is in the building. Matty Ice is ready. I am so glad that Matt Ryan is having a great game. He is proving the doubters wrong. He is having an absolute great run in Atlanta as of right now. He's even proven me wrong. I said earlier this season that Matt Ryan could not fit in the Atlanta Falcons offense and hey look at me he's proven me wrong so credit is due to Matt Ryan he's having a great 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 outing for the Atlanta Falcons I'm glad I hope he can keep it going now, of course, the Atlanta Falcons rushing game is something that I really can't smile about. Of course, Cordell Patterson had another pretty decent rushing game, had 60 yards. However, the Falcons team only had 72 rushing yards in total. So this rushing offense definitely needs to improve. Miami is a pretty good team when it comes to uh, defending, running the ball. However, if you want to compete with those good teams, like, for example, the Atlanta Falcons next week have the Carolina Panthers, who are one of the best defenses in the league. If the Atlanta Falcons want to compete with this team, they are are most definitely, most definitely going to have to keep that running game going. They're going to have to get that running game back set. I think they're going to work on that this week in practice. However, I believe the Atlanta Falcons can work on that. This can get better. Cordell Patterson had another pretty good rushing game. He's obviously our best running back up to this point. Might be our best utility player. The guy can line up anywhere, lined up a little bit at receiver, lines up a little bit at running back. I'm really glad we got Cordell Patterson. He fits the mold of what Arthur Smith is trying to build in Atlanta. Now, of course, moving on to another wide receiver. For my boy Calvin Ridley. He did come back from an injury and had a pretty quiet game, including a pretty bad drop. He had a couple of bad drops. You could see that he was a little rusty and dusty here and that. However, he did score a touchdown that effectively really, really mattered when you're looking at the grand scheme of things in the game. And when you're seeing that the Atlanta Falcons just narrowly, narrowly escaped with a win. So Calvin Ridley, he didn't have the world's best game. He didn't have a 100-yard game. However, he did have a very, very big impact with that touchdown score. Now, going down to the next wide receiver, we have Russell Gage. And Russell Gage, dude, had an outing. Four receptions, 
67 yards and one touchdown. And one of those four receptions included the 42-yard touchdown. Man, Russell Gage, he played so, so well. He is a perfect utility receiver. Yes, he did have a couple of drops. However, he can just get in the cracks. He can sort of maneuver his way around the field that not a lot of NFL wide receivers can. I'm really glad that Russell Gage had a great game. I think he is one of the more underrated wide receivers in the entire NFL. And definitely, as far as the Falcons are concerned, he is very underappreciated. I believe Russell Gage is going to go down as a really, really good wide receiver, of course, uh, this year and maybe even next year. However, we're going to get out of the hypothetical situation, stay into the moment. Russell Gage had a great performance today. Now, of course, we have to go to the defense, and this is where you're going to see the smile wipe right off my face. The defense... They did pretty, pretty good, but boy, does this defense need a little bit of improvement. The Miami Dolphins were 28th with 16.5 points per game. The Atlanta defense allowed 28 points, 28 points to the Miami Dolphins just today. Now, of course, enough with the negative. Let's get back to the positive things. Let's get the smile back on to you Atlanta fans' faces. Now, the positive is that Deion Jones and Forsyth Alua Khan had 15 and 13 tackles. The defense as a whole still needs improvement. Of course, Forsyth Alua Khan returned an interception for like 50 yards today, which uh, really, really, really impacted the game. It shifted the momentum back to the Falcons' side. Deion Jones combined for all of Atlanta's sacks and tackles for loss with one sack and three tackles for loss. This is good when you're looking from a player standpoint, but when you're looking from a team standpoint, you need some help. You're going to need some help. Deion Jones is not going to have a freakish week every week. He is, in my opinion, low-key, one of the top eight to the top five linebackers in the league. I think Deion Jones is criminally underrated as a linebacker. However, that is a conversation for a much, much broader topic. I can go for years on how I believe Deion Jones is one of the best linebackers in the league, quietly one of the best linebackers in the league. Now, of course, going to Atlanta's defense again, they forced two interceptions, and that was a positive. The only problem is that they allowed two times more touchdowns than interceptions to a quarterback, which was Tua Tagovailoa, who only had three passing touchdowns heading into this game. This defense needs a little bit of improvement. The two interceptions are really, really good. However, the four passing touchdowns, that indicates that this Atlanta defense needs a little, maybe just a little bit of work. You need to um, really avoid, you know, quarterbacks going for four touchdowns, especially when that quarterback came into the game with less touchdowns than he threw inside of the game. Like, for example, elite quarterbacks like Tom Brady or elite quarterbacks that we're about to face, I mean, Dak Prescott. Those guys will absolutely carve you up if you give them the chance. And seeing Tua Tagovailoa carve us up was not the best sight. So the Atlanta Falcons better improve upon that. Now, the Atlanta Falcons defense also allowed 132 rushing yards. That also needs to improve. You cannot allow rushing yards to these great NFL teams. Of course, Miami, they're a little bit of a, a rebuilding team, to say the least. However, the 132 rushing yards really, really alarming. You're going to need to fix that before you go against a uh, flurry of games next week. I'm going to get into three key games later that are coming within the next three weeks. However, getting to the next topic, why Atlanta did force two touchdowns, excuse me, two turnovers. The Miami Dolphins did gain the lead with two minutes left, and the Atlanta Falcons also allowed four passing touchdowns with 400-plus total yards. So the Atlanta Falcons, while the defense did play a great game, they didn't play a perfect game. It wasn't an amazing game by any means. There's a lot of stuff we still need to work on. So uh, the Atlanta Falcons, I wouldn't say panic. I wouldn't say, oh, the defense is so bad. Like, I wouldn't say that. I'm just going to say that the defense, we can still use some improvement. Dean Pease, uh, our defensive coordinator, is obviously getting more and more comfortable with his pieces. Man, I'm really excited for what this defense can develop into, and I'm really excited to see them next week when they have a full week of practice, a full week of understanding, and they can really, really go into the next game. Now, speaking of next games, we have three of quite possibly the most key games of the year for the Atlanta Falcons schedule. You have division rivals, the Panthers and the Saints, and then you have quite possibly the hottest team in the entire league, the Dallas Cowboys, within the next three weeks. The Atlanta Falcons need to continue to improve in these next three games, and they need to get their offense going. They need to get the rushing game better. They need to get the defense better. And with those improvements and with the improvements I explained all throughout this video, along with a very, very hot streak that Matt Ryan is on and getting the ball to our main targets and Kyle Pitts and Calvin Ridley, Russell Gage, and many others, I believe the Atlanta Falcons can most definitely, most definitely come out of this little streak with a not only a win, 
winning record, but maybe even undefeated. But I'm not going to go that far. I'm just going to take it one game at a time, just like the Atlanta Falcons should. But man, oh man, this was great to watch. I'm glad the Atlanta Falcons got this win. And looking forward to next week. Of course, on Tuesday, the Atlanta Braves have their, uh, their World Series. So you can expect a video from me on that really, really soon. However, without further ado, that's going to be the end of this video. I would like to thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Of course, links in the description. I have TikTok, Spotify, Instagrams, and a whole lot more. Please follow those for me. I would really, really appreciate it. But most of all, you on the other side of the screen watching this video, make sure to stay loved and stay blessed. And without further ado, I'm going to end this video. Thank you for watching. I respect many people for the job they've done.